Hi, my name is Dr. Don Wicker, and today we're going to continue our lecture series in organizational behavior. This is lecture series number 12, and our topic today is interpersonal communications in organizations. Our objectives in our talk today in interpersonal communication in organizations, we're going to look at the basic elements in interpersonal communication, the fabric abilities that foster ethical interpersonal communication. We're also going to look at nonverbal communication effects in the dialogue. And finally, the role of communication networks in interpersonal communication. The abilities and behaviors that foster dialogue. As you can see from my diagram, we have dialogue in the middle. However, on the outsides, of course, we have communication openness. We have constructive feedback, appropriate self-disclosure, and active listening, and nonverbal communication. Now, what do all these mean? Elements in communication openness. What does openness really mean in communication? Well, think about the, the message transmission. You think about the trust that people have in their communication. And you think about their agendas. What is their agenda? Is their agenda open? And you think about the goals related to the openness of communication. Contextual factors in communication openness. Think about the history of the relationship that will affect trust and risk taking. You have guarded interpersonal communication. That, that people are guarded against. People don't want to always open up. And you think about the adversarial relationship, uh, but not in support of the relationship. And that can affect that openness. And of course, when, when someone else has control over your fate, that of course can affect the openness in communication. Constructive feedback. What happens in constructive feedback in the communication? Well, think about establishing a trust between sender and receiver, of course, and you make feedback specific rather than general. People always like that specific feedback. And give feedback when the receiver is ready to accept it. A lot of people aren't receptive to feedback at certain times uh, during their, their projects or, or during their, their job. And provide feedback on behaviors uh, the receiver can change. You want to provide that feedback that can be, um, be constructive. And don't overwhelm the receiver with feedback. Of course, no one wants to be overwhelmed with a lot of tasks and, and things that they need to do or uh, repair. So don't overwhelm your receiver when giving feedback. Appropriate self-disclosure. What is appropriate self-disclosure? Well, the basis for personal growth and development. Uh, facilitate dialogue and sharing of work-related problems and complicated by power differences between superior and subordinates. So all these are appropriate self-disclosure. Active listening. What really is active listening? Well, have a purpose for listening. Uh, you can always suspend judgment, at least initially. Uh, resist distractors and focus on the sender. Pause before responding to the sender. That is always a sign of active listening. Uh, rephrase the sender's message. Seek out important things, which is very important in active listening. And finally, use the differential between rates of speech and the thought and reflect the search for meaning. So all those are involved in active listening. Use the differential between rates of speech and thought to reflect and search for meaning. These are all involved in active listening. What are the types of nonverbal cues when you think about communication? Well, of course, you have eye contact. You have uh, individual gestures. You have the voice tone. You have the proximity of, of your open communication, the proximity of the person that you're expressing your feelings to. These are all types of nonverbal cues. Nonverbal cues and status differences. Think about status differences. Of course, you think about privilege versus non-privilege. You think about private versus open. You can even uh, involve furnishings in an office setting that can be uh, nonverbal cues and status differences. And, and you think about higher status. Of course, it's easier to invade territory versus lower status where employees may not be as easy to invade territory when you're talking about communication. Interpersonal communication network. What is that interpersonal communication network? Where the pattern of communication flows, uh, relationships and understanding develop over time among people rather than focusing on the individual. 
whether specific messages received as intended by the sender. So you think about that interpersonal communication network is real important in the communication process. Individual networks, of course, in those networks, you can have vertical network, you can have external network, lateral network, and of course, individual networks all can be working with each other in order to bring about positive communication. And formal group network and the grapevine. What is the grapevine? And think about networking. Well, it's the unofficial and at times confidential person to person or person to group chain of verbal and at times email communication. And major types of grapevine information you could have single, single strand, you could have gossip, you could have uh, probability chain, cluster chain. Uh, cannot be eliminated by managers, of course, but this is that informal group network. It's, it's the grapevine, the gossip, the gossip information that, that comes from that communication. So if we talk about the informal networking, what about the formal employee network? Well, you have the organizational uh, network that flows from employee-related communication vertically between levels and, and between positions, departments, divisions. All types of networks are important in the day-to-day -day communication in any organization. Well, that's basically a brief summary of lecture series number 12. Again, we were talking about organizational behavior, and our topic today was interpersonal communication in organizations. I want to thank you for listening, and I'll talk to you again in lecture series number 13.